Okay, so, okay. Yeah, so it's third major the meeting, um, it's 8th of September 2021, and we have a bunch of external contributors, which is great to see. So we can start with intros. Um, Amir Be, um from Jetstack and I work on the third major team. Uh, Mile, would you like to go next? Hi, everybody. Yeah, working on the third manager team at Jetstack. Uh, and that's for me. Um, Sir, Sir, you. It's unpronounceable. Like my my parent my parents did this for a purpose. <laughs> I think it's Sir Sergio should just call it search whatever works. <laughs> it's fine. Ah, uh, okay. Good. Yeah, thanks for the warm introduction. Um, my name is Serge Sierioshka Sergey. Whatever works for you. Uh, I work for Red Hat now. Three. It's three years it, because I know because I just got my laptop refreshed. So just sitting in front of it. And uh, yeah, before that, two and a half years Chorus before it got acquired. And uh, yeah, I'm team lead of the off off team at uh, OpenShift. And you see Christoph and Sebastian here who are also uh, team members of that team. And we also have Standa, who is on PTO today. And uh, the TLDR, or the responsibility of our team inside OpenShift, like whenever something comes up with authorization, authentication, certificate management, or back, and essentially everything that SIG off in Kubernetes produces sort of like an our responsibility domain to integrate into, into OpenShift. And uh, yeah, Cert Manager is, is extremely interesting for us. Um, we would love to contribute and we would love to participate. You already saw our experiments with our library go based operator and I will leave Sebastian in a second to talk more a little bit about it. Yeah, but from my side, super excited and uh, super happy to, to um, know you all. And uh, just a message from my side, we would love to contribute um, also to the um, cert manager project. So we will be looking around for issues. If you have anything you want to have tackled, um, uh, first good issues, I think, is a, is a good label or something like that. Please let us know. Um, yeah, we would love to sort of like participate in this community. And um, yeah, that's it from my side. Uh, maybe I will give over to Sebastian uh, for the next round. Hey, um, I'm Sebastian Waskawicz. I'm based in Poland. Um, a long time Red Hatter. Um, I've, but I recently joined the OpenShift engineering team and I'm focusing on the authentication authorization. And as Sergey mentioned, you know, all the certificates, anything security related. Um, and, you know, we are very excited about the cert manager. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I'm the, um, uh, I'm one of the engineers who actually developed the, our small proof of concept or experiment with library go based uh, operator for cert manager uh, as a matter of fact i even recorded a demo i'll link it into that document so you can uh, have a look at it it's three minutes long and not very complicated we're just spinning up the operator it installs all the crds and it also installs our all um, three components which is the webhook ca, inj CA injector and the controller and that's it. You can start requesting your certificates. Um, so let me link the demo. If you'd like to have a look at it in a free in a free slot, please do so. Um, and we're very interested. What do you think about this? Um, what are your thoughts around OLM and all operator hub, operator SDK, all those things? Um, and yeah. Let's let's talk about this. So having said that, let me hand over to, to Krzysiek. Oh yeah, I was already on Friday. So my introduction, in addition to what Sergio already said, there's not much to, more to say, except maybe you have also one of those weird Polish names. So if Krzysztof is not is too hard to pronounce, you can also say Krzysztof. Uh, it's basically the same. And yeah, also Red Hat, all team. Um, but just one month and a half or something like that. That's awesome. Um, should we maybe give um, Abhishek, would you like to introduce yourself or? 
perhaps they're they would rather listen in. Um, should we quickly go maybe through the rest of the JetSec team members just to? Yeah. So Richard Wall, uh, JetStack Cert Manager team. Um, I'm based in England, in Bristol, and I've been with JetStack four years, I think. Well, I'm I've been working on the OLM packaging for Cert Manager recently, so I'm I'm interested to, to hear about the um, the operator you've created when we've done the intros, Josh. You're muted. You're muted. Muted. Hello. Yeah, I'm Josh. Uh, I'm in London. Um, yeah, I've been at JetStack for about four years doing different things. But uh, yeah, now I'm on the Cert Manager team, working on that primarily um, for a good part of a year or so, I think. Yep. And uh, I'm Jake. I'm also on the Cert Manager team and at JetStack, based in London as well. And I think that's everyone. <laughs> this is me. Oh, I, sorry, I, I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Ash, uh, but there's not really much more to say. I'm also on the cert manager team. I'm based in the northwest of England, not far from Manchester. That's great. Um, yeah, so obviously we didn't have a chance to look at the operator demo video yet. Oh, thanks for posting it, Sebastian. Um, I guess we'd be quite, yeah, quite interested to hear a bit more about that. Um, like we have been mostly working, I think, well, Richard knows that best because he knows the project. Well, if it's only three minutes long, shall one of us share our screen and watch it with uh, Sebastian doing a, a commentary? Would that work? Or is that, is that too much? I can see Christoph um, laughing. I'm just pure of joy. Um, Let's do that. Let's only it's only three minutes. So um I shall I shall try and share my screen and show show that. Bear with me. Never remember whether Firefox allows me to share a window. Can you see that? You can see the Firefox logo in a microphone sign. I think it's the wrong window that's being shared. Oh, sorry. OK, let me try again. I'll just try the entire screen. So, Great. Can you see that? Yeah. I maximize it and play it. Okay, I guess there is no audio. So, um, oh. so, so no, let, there, is, let there is for me. I can hear it. I, I thought uh, I assumed you could all hear it. <laughs> okay, no I'll, problem. Mute, I'll mute it and I'll um, play it again. Yeah, I can do a voiceover. So the yeah. operate I the operator, um the search manager operator lives in its own repo under OpenShift organization. And so far uh, it's based on library Go. This is our framework that is used by the core in OpenShift engineers to um to maintain all core controllers like etcd, API server, uh all the cluster authentication operators. So it's basically a set of tools built on top of client go uh, to manage the core operators um, so, so they, just maybe I'll just interrupt that's that's one of the questions um, but you talk about core operators um, that is as opposed to optional uh, operators in the OLM um, operator hub catalog is, is the intention that this will be a will be installed on openshift by default. 
Yeah, but maybe some historical background. So when we started the library Go based operator, that was indeed sort of like the plan. Uh, the plans changed a little bit in, in between. And the idea today is to install it indeed as a day two operator, namely optionally after you install core open shift. Okay. However, and, and uh, I'll, I'll just write it back, um, give back the microphone to Sebastian. There is, there are some things that are beneficial from you, at least for us using library Go. Um, because all operators that we sort of like maintain uh, within the OpenShift code base have a common set of, um, you know, CRDs where we report our status against. There is a cluster operator a CRD where we sort of like report back the status um, of uh, the operand that we are maintaining. And that way we can give certain, you know, feedback to users how well or how healthy uh, the operand behaves. Um, so that was sort of like before um, even S Sebastian finalized the sort of like implementation detail, the experimentation for us is like, how would it look like if we would make cert manager part of core payload of OpenShift? Um, this yeah. changed over time towards OLM as you figured. <laughs> um, we still see the benefit obviously of using library Go, but we would love to discuss as well. And for us, it gives a very nice and tight and neat integration into um, the OpenShift um, core operators, I mean, forget about core, about the OpenShift operators ecosystem, right, which we maintain natively. Um, so for us, it is definitely beneficial, at least from a historical perspective, to to continue with the library Go based stuff. Um, Sebastian? Yes. yes, so to, to add a to little... Press play, Sebastian. I, I paused the video. Tell me when to press, tell me how to control the video. Uh, okay, sure. So uh, just let me add one very small thing on top of this. There's an initiative in within the OLM team. It's called Zero Day Operators, which is basically they are looking for a way to make one of the optional operators installed by default. So when you get your brand new cluster out of the installer thing, you get those one of those optional operators installed by default. And you can track this effort in the, uh, let me give you the link, in the OLM2232, which I just pasted into the chat. Um, so yeah. And uh, even someone paste that, um, sorry to interrupt you again, paste that into the doc, because yep. the chat um, will disappear at the end. Sure, sure, sure. Um, okay, somebody. Because that sounds really Got interesting it. to me. Yeah, sure. So. To make the long story short, it is very likely there will be a way to make the optional operator installed by default in the future. So far, they are working mm -hmm. on the design and you know and other things, but you know there's a fair chance that in the future you can do that. Okay. All right. Um, so could you please resume the video? Yeah. Pressing play. Sure. So the operator basically bootstraps. Um, it installs all the CRDs, all the controllers. Um, so it takes a while for the reconciliation loop to settle, to settle, um, to settle a bit. And then you need to create the cluster cert manager CR to basically tell the operator that yes, I want to have a new cert manager uh, in, to be installed in my cluster. So once you do that, uh, you can navigate back into the OpenShift web console. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I'll show the search manager CRDs installed in, in the cluster. So you can see there's the operator OpenShift IO search manager. This is the one that we are using and there's the config OpenShift IO. This is one of the conventions that we use in our operators created by library go um right so it takes I'll, a while i'll ask you a question later about because this this i was asked, i was one talking to mail only this morning about yeah. how we would configure the olm bundle that we've created we it's it it it, it doesn't ha seem to have any way to say how many replicas there should be of the cert manager webhook for example or, or yes that's correct it's, so this customizing is customizing command line yeah. arguments and as it is now it's it's currently there's no option to configure this 
That's oh, a so great go point. Ahead. Go ahead. Um, so it takes a while. The operator creates you all the deployments for the for the controller, CA injector, and webhook. And probably, as if I remember correctly, the last step I just take the um, the CR from the documentation, the example, and it this actually generates me a self signed certificate in my sandbox namespace. So in this video, you, you could see me installing the operator, creating new cert manager CRD to tell the operator to spin up a new cluster manager for me, and then creating um, creating uh, and getting a certificate generated by the cert manager from the documentation. Was that a custom version of cert manager that was in, like, did the user specify the version of cert manager that was being in? I think I used 1.4. Um, I think so. Let me I check thought this. So the user could install like any version basically, or yes. there'll be some kind of check, like if it works with that version of OpenShift or anything like that. So any yes, we've, we've been thinking about this. Um, there's many ways you can do that because you need to establish a relation in both directions. So you need to, you need to tell what are the search manager versions supported by given OpenShift version. And having an insert manager, you may ask, what are the OpenShift versions that I can install into? And there are certain annotations in the bundle that you can express this kind of relationships. And there's also second mechanism. There, there are in the OLM, there's a notion of channels. So you can create a channel per uh, per open OpenShift version and control this. So we don't know at this at this moment we don't know what what we'll need in the future. Yes, exactly. But, yeah, to to put a little bit more um, um, yeah ingredients to it, um, what we are usually used to from core operators that we have usually a one and one mapping between OpenShift and concrete operator version that that we ship. For instance, I'm you know I've I've been previously maintaining the Prometheus operator integration into um, OpenShift. Maybe you know that project as well. It's an upstream, completely open source project for installing Prometheus on on your cluster. It's sort of like um, a little bit similar to the cert um, manager kind of thing, right? Um, we uh, we have also different installation methods of Prometheus operator into OpenShift. There is obviously an OLM bundle maintained by community, but we also have a very, very opinionated sort of like um, deployment method inside OpenShift um, that operator name is cluster monitoring operator, but it really doesn't matter. It's, it's similar to the cert manager operator that Sebastian just showed. It's just an opinionated way of how to install and to bring cert manager or in the other case, Prometheus operator um, into OpenShift. And um, exactly, and this is sort of like also the reasoning why, why at least for this operator, we went with the library Go based approach. The, the purpose is supposed to be to have a neat and tight integration into OpenShift. Um, if we can make this broader scope, that would be great. Um, but that's at least sort of like what, what we are aiming for to have a good supportability um, layer, right? Where we have tight control on exactly the deployment topology uh, of cert manager inside OpenShift, also exactly the, the configuration options that we can hook into the cluster operator status that uh, Sebastian just showed you such that you get feedback about the operand status and stuff like this. Right? So I see a lot of metaphors and a lot of um, uh, like, <laughs> um, yeah, similarity similarities to what how we how we um, also did it with Prometheus operator as well. Okay, that makes sense. So you would like basically cut a new operator release if you needed a new cert manager version installed, or new OpenShift on a new OpenShift version as well. Yes, precisely, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so and I guess you can test that. Yeah. Way. yeah, yeah, definitely, because you also need you need to. We, we even need to be a little bit more strict than that. We cannot even rely on tags in Docker registries. We need to rely on shy digests. And that's because of the use case 
where you have the OpenShift so-called disconnected installation or offline installation. So prior to installing OpenShift, then you need to mirror all those images from, from whatever repos that you're pulling them from. So uh, in this case, we probably will need to have um, very specific shy digests of those images. So we even cannot rely on tags. This is actually what happens with most of Red Hat products under the covers. OK. In, we, we had, well, what I've been trying to do yesterday and today is remove from the Red Hat um, marketplace an old version of the Cert Manager OLM bundle, which in which we had um, certified the images, which meant that the Cert Manager binaries got repackaged in Red Hat approved Docker images. Um, but we decided that that was, we decided the community operators mechanism was easier. Why am I saying this? Because because those those certified images had very particular SHA checksums and seem to have, an, uh, have been certified, whatever that means. Right. Whether, whether that means they, they, does that does that mean they somehow get bundled into uh, OpenShift? Or, I don't know. So I, I don't know all the details, but I think um, you're basically pushing all those images into Red Hat Container Registry. So under the covers, it, it means the same as pushing them into Quay, into very specific hidden namespace, so to speak. Um, right. Um, it doesn't it doesn't help with the offline scenario that you just uh, described. It's a separate. It sounds like it's a separate. Thing. I would need. I think it I, is. I, I, I would need to check that. The honest answer is I don't know. Uh, in our in our Red Hat release machinery, we basically translate all those tags into very specific shy digests. This is what we do in, in the productization process. If you look at, for example, Red Hat SSO operator, uh, I was a, the original creator of this one. So internally, we use tags to make our CI simple. But then just before release, uh, doing the release, we change the tag into shy digest. And this, is hap this happens automatically on, on, on I mean, behind the scenes. How this works for partners whenever they push anything into uh, operator mar marketplace or Red Hat Container Catalog, I don't know. I would need yeah. to check what do you push and what's being downloaded from the uh, from the marketplace and compare those two. The other thing that I get confused about is that is. <laughs> what is the operator i i i've been thinking cert manager is the operator and what i have created and uploaded to the community operators repository is a a bundle or a or package um the cert manager so that olm can install cert manager but then you seem to, what you what you've created is a cert manager operator or i i would think of it as a cert manager Installer or a cert manager lifecycle manager. Um, wh why do you need an extra? Why do we need an operator to install in, to install cert manager when OLM already does that? So the you basically sh so this is you you can also do you can also deploy a bundle. And within the bundle, you can specify all those images. For example, the controller, CA, uh, injector, and webhook. That would work also. But then when you grow um, and you have those complicated use cases with upgrades, for example, your customers have existing installations. And you need mm. to do crazy things to migrate from one version to another. This becomes limiting very quickly. It's like okay. a Helm chart, right? You can very quickly install things, but once you 
start getting those complicated use cases, customers asking for, for doing really crazy things to, to, to support their installations, then you're running out of options very quickly. So it's slightly okay. better to create an operator. So, so to create all those objects programmatically, so we can control them. You can write if statements in, in to, to support whatever crazy use case you have, because this will be very beneficial in the future. It's it has okay. slightly higher uh, barrier and learning curve, but it pays off in the future. Exactly. Um, yeah. Just just to uh, undermine what Sebastian just said, we we use this pattern of meta operators pretty much extensively within OpenShift. You will see operators like turtles going all the way down. You see operators installing operators, installing operators, installing operands in, in OpenShift um, um, in sort of like in a recursive manner in, in, in many places. It's not it's not a new scheme. I think we even did introduce the sort of like concept of a meta operator already at core S times. Um, to even um, you know say not even so much of crazy things you know obviously Sebastian is completely right I mean we sometimes have weird use cases that we would have to incorporate and sort of like um, uh, instruct our operators to do very custom logic I would like to say it differently OLM is great for describing a deployment topology right you can you can configure a deployment you can set up you know maybe templatize an amount of replicas and stuff like this um, but Think of certain use cases. So, for instance, in other cases like like Prometheus operator integrations in OpenShift, we have a notion of tenancy, where we have to tell the operator in a very dynamic fashion what namespaces it is allowed to reconcile and what namespaces it is not allowed to reconcile. So, it's like a yeah. soft tenancy mechanism, right? We currently don't have this plan for Cert Manager, but this is very, very you know intricate logic that is not expressible in a simple deployment um, YAML descriptor. Uh, which you put into an OLM bundle. This is some very custom logic where sort of like the set of namespaces is dependency injected into this meta operator. And that meta operator then, like we are doing even such a crazy thing with Prometheus operator where we even deploy two instances of Prometheus operator, each responsible for, for separate tenants, right? So this is a good use case where you could see that a meta operator is, is, is useful. Very concretely here, um, again, I'm, I'm always falling back to the cluster operator CRD that Sebastian showed you, is that you get instant feedback in the console about the state of your operator. Um, you know, is it degraded? Is it not degraded? Um, is it is it having any um, issues sort of like bootstrapping? And this is sort of like a very, like, this is a pattern that we use across many operators in, in OpenShift. So we consoli can consolidate the general sort of like health situation of the set of all installed co operators inside the cluster. These things are simply not expressible in a simple YAML file put in, in into a bundle for a simple deployment. I think it's it's a great way, right? Um, but for again, like for more elaborate use cases, this this becomes a limiting factor. I missed a little bit. Was it? Wait, well, it would. Sorry, I I was speaking. I was muted. But go ahead, um, Berber. I just wanted to quickly ask: Would it be users who would install and upgrade the operator themselves, the surf major operator? Would it like already come part of the core platform? I think that might have already been mentioned. So as it is now, it would be the users who install the operator. Now, when it comes to upgrades, the idea is that operator should handle upgrades transparently for you, even if you upgrade the cluster. So if you, for example, have OpenShift 4.7. something and you would like to upgrade it to 4.8, it should automatically upgrade all the operators that you're running in and then the cluster. So it's pretty robust way of doing upgrades. Of course, there's also manual mode. If you don't want automation to kick in, you can turn it off. Yeah, sounds great, self upgrades. Uh, just to give a, another example, you would be amazed. We even have an operator installing API server. <laughs> so it's it's literally those these meta meta operator um, you know pattern is pretty much visible everywhere. Um, but so the, the way, other thing I was going to say, um, we we have a lot of discussions um, 
a jet stack, a, a, sorry, in the cert manager team about the fact that cert, ma cert manager really is um it, it's kind of designed to be a global install. It's, it, we although theoretically we think we could have multiple cert manager reconcilers all operating against a single set of uh, CRDs that are installed. We've never really we don't test that and um, we don't advise our users to, to do that. Um, so what I saw in this demo was that you have the uh, you have the option to install multiple instances of cert manager. Um, what was the what's the CRD that you've uh, devised? Is it called a, an installation? Is there a so, way to limit the number of installations? And, and sorry, I'll just ask one more question. Where do the C, where does CERT managers CRDs get installed? Are they will they be installed dynamically by the by your CERT manager operator, or will they be part of the OLM bundle? Okay, sure. Um, so let me try to answer this in order. So thing. So the first question was about so-called descoped operators. So you have a notion of global operator, one single operator managing or watching all the namespaces. And this is the future, actually. If you look at the uh, operator SDK mailing list, this is the advice deployment model for the future. As a matter of fact, uh, operators that will watch only a single namespace are, as it is now, strongly discouraged. OK. So. If you advise your customers to install only a single um, search manager operator or search manager uh, controller in their cluster, that's a good thing. Um, please don't even try to to test multiple installations because you know very soon uh, this option will probably go away from operator SDK. Now inside the bundle, you can as it is now. So you know. Um, in the future, it might change, but as it is now, you can specify whether your operator will install in a namespace mode or global mode. This is what you can do now. Um, so far, we haven't tried writing any bundle for our experiment with cert, cert manager operator. So you couldn't see those screens. You, I actually installed the operator manually from my command line instead of going to the operators tab and you know finding it in the operator marketplace it's simply yeah. not there um, so um, so that's so I think this I hope this answers your questions about the single namespace versus global operators right? Or would you like um, me to add anything more? Well, it's it it does you do that does answer my question. Um, I I thought I had some kind of use cases for why you might want to have multiple cert managers. You maybe maybe you install cert manager one point four. Um, I've said this to the guys in the team, and I don't think they all agree with me, but you install Cert Manager 1.4 and it's stable, um, but then 1.5 comes out. Um, theoretically, if our API is as stable as we hope it is, you should be able to install the 1.5 um, um, controller manager operating against the 1.4 CRDs alongside the 1.4 controller manager, see whether it works in a particular namespace. And if it does, then you uh, can roll out that version of cert manager globally. That's that's a sort of example of why I thought you might want to have multiple versions uh, running. Right. The other thing I was going to say, the, the other reason I'm asking about the CRDs is because I've read, it, while reading the OLM operator SDK documentation, I've I've read somewhere about this. Um, there's a there's a description of a dependency tree where various OLM bundles can depend not not on the an, an OLM bundle might depend on the cert manager API rather than the cert manager implementation. 
And so it, it, it seems, which I, which I quite liked. I thought that was quite a nice idea that we've come up with an API, but people, it's conceivable that someone else might write a, a competing cert manager, which also um, operates against that standard API. And so that's why I'm asking about, it, it, unless your cert manager operator um, bundle has the cert manager CRDs in it, then it seems like it would break that dependency uh, mechanism. Yeah, that's true. So one of the problems the operator SDK team outlined with the notion of having one custom resource and multiple operators watching it is that you may run into unexpected behavior very quickly. For example, you may you may misconfigure your operator and now the 1.4 operator will try to reconcile a CR which is meant for 1.5. And this actually is a real issue. It happened to us with Red Hat SSO operator because our operator can also do that. And solving those kind of problems on a customer side is really complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so what you can do instead, you can, um, you can create a bundle which doesn't contain the deployment spec, so it don't deploy anything, but contains only CRs. And then in the bundles, in the OLM, you, you have the notion of dependencies. So your cert manager 1.5 might have a dependency for cert manager API bundle, mm. or a, a thing where you put all those stable CRs. So yeah. this is a kind of way you can get away with multiple operators watching the same kind of resource. But you know, please bear in mind, it's a very sharp blade and you can cut yourself very easily. Uh, if you, you know, if you, more than one operator will try to reconcile a single CR, that's a prescription for disaster. If you consider writing, for example, status field, upgrading, you know, changing the, the versions, the generation of the, of the CR, um, there's a lot of problems associated with this kind of setup. Right, right, yeah. So I would rather see um, maybe some some good advice in the documentation that if someone wants to do that, maybe maybe some proper CI automation or maybe some staging cluster um, should be should be a better way. I take your points, yeah. Uh, we we have talked quite a lot about packaging the CR, the set manager CRDs, the webhook, and the associated RBAC and manifest just for the webhook. So you could you could install the set manager API on its own, which I still think is quite a good idea. And we've we've got various projects in, in Jetstack where we, we just want to test against the API. We don't care where the cert manager is reconciling the, the certificates. Yeah. Right. Um, maybe maybe one way of doing this would be to bind an API version with a specific cert manager version. So you'd whenever you release cert manager uh, 1.5, you will have your CR, all the CRDs with version 1.5 and migrating from one to another will be a matter of either creating some maybe webhook, conversion webhook, or maybe doing the conversion inside the operator manually. Um, but yeah, maybe that could be a way out. OK, well, yeah. I, I, I've asked so many questions. I, I've realized the time is now quarter to six, and um, I'll stop talking because it Thanks for answering those questions, and I should go and uh, read the code and uh, talk to you about this a bit more offline, probably. No problem. I'm I'm very happy that I could be helpful. It feels like we should have a like a channel, uh, yeah, a communication channel that we can bounce questions off each other. And because I had a like I have a bunch of questions about like actually consuming Cert Manager and OpenShift because that's where our that's where most of our support questions come from. But I don't think it would be that, that valuable to talk about it in this meeting. Like examples of people 
like setting up custom CAs and then trying to consume them inside OpenShift. It's more of a, it's, it's more of a, it's not really related to set, set manager and OpenShift, apart from the fact that they're trying to use them both. <laughs> so yeah, is there, is there somewhere where you'd be willing to chat? Yes, definitely. Uh, more than willing. Let's let's like let's sync uh, sort of like out of band, and we can make even an independent session where we can also introduce other parties which are involved in that project because we are sort of like on the engineering side of things, and I think we're talking about so supportability now, and you know what happens when things go wonky and open shift and stuff like this. So there's definitely, um, you know, uh, the will to engage the communication between us. Yes. Awesome. That sounds great. Um, I'm also conscious of the time and I think we should at least talk a little bit about the second point as well, since I guess it's a bug and we probably need to address it before the next meeting. Unless, um, I don't know if someone wanted to say something else about the operator. Did, did, we, did we touch on most important parts? I think so. I mean, should we just, is it, do you have like a public Slack or email or do you want to chat in our Slack? I don't really mind how, how we should chat to each other. So I think all of us are in the, in the Kubernetes Slack, right? So that's how I stayed in touch after the, the setup on Friday. Sounds good. Kubernetes Slack sounds good, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cool. So it's the Cert Manager Dev channel. Um, okay. I know, Christoph, you are already there, um, I guess. Cool. Okay. Oh. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. And yeah, feel free to hang around or go while we chat about our own internal bugs. <laughs> Up to you. So the next point on the agenda is the, um, so there was, um, I think like a, an issue was raised that sort of managers potentially um, not compatible with a particular part in the ACME spec. Um, I think I will pass it on to Josh, who knows about this bug quite a lot. Yes, I hope I know somewhat about this kind of quote unquote bug. Um, yes, so there have been two instances. Let me pull up the issue as well and put it in the document. So this is the issue. Um, yeah. So yes, there have been, as far as I'm aware, two new instances of um, two separate entities creating Acme servers. Um, and both of their ACME implementations um, don't agree with certain manners implementation of the ACME client. Um, and the discrepancy is, as far as I can see in the debugging, um, is that in our ACME challenge controller, as one of the first things we do when it syncs an ACME challenge. So let's say an ACME order creates an ACME challenge. The ACME challenge kind of starts, so it's the kind of initial sync. We will do, we will call get challenge. So get challenge, um, the ACME client side, this will do a post as get to the challenge endpoint. Um, and the reason we do this, as far as I can see, is that we want to basically recover. So it's just kind of doing a Kubernetes controller thing. It's just kind of recovering state. Like 
if the controller restarted, whatever, 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 just kind of get wants to pick up where it left off, right? It just wants to like see what the state of the world is. Um, so that has uh, once it's complete that, it will then determine whether it needs to. It'll update the active challenge with whatever you know state was returned, um, assuming that it's you know not accepted yet. The next it will update the challenge and it will sync again, and then it will accept the challenge, and then it will pull the authorization of point um, to wait for the kind of challenge to complete, um, or it will uh, rather it will complete the self check assuming that the, it hasn't been accepted yet. Once it completes the self-check, it will then accept the challenge, and then the ACME server will um, you know, do the HTTP or DNS validation, and uh, yeah, set manager will wait for the authorization to complete. Um, so that line of code, or that block to kind of get this challenge, has been uh, for like four years or so. Um, and this has worked, always worked with Let's Encrypt. That's not been a problem, but um, I guess we're seeing a lot more um, kind of Acme server implementation uh, implementations these days. Um, so yeah, these two instances where um, this isn't working well with, with their servers. Um, and they are both suggesting that that get challenge call is non-compliant to the spec. Um, yeah, so what, one of the servers, they've changed their code, so it's a bit more permissible. Um, however, the second server doesn't want to do that. Um, and they're, they're quite keen to suggest that this is non-compliant behavior and that we should do something about it. Um, so we kind of have three options here. Number one is we do nothing. And that's to assert that this is part of the Acme spec, our client. What we're doing is correct. Um, yeah, that uh, to do that would suggest that you know we're all in agreement that that is Acme compliant. What our client is doing, and Josh, I think um, yeah, is that the, like the definition of that? Is that like the diagram in part four of the Acme spec? Like I was just quickly going through just. So oh. people have some reference. Could you link to what you're looking at? Um, in the yeah. chat. Oh, sorry. There's like posters get if you like scroll down. It's, are, we are talking about that bit, right? Um, where it's a white issuance. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. So. This is past the order part. We've created an order. It's fine. Um, the the <clears throat> I think the core of the issue is is that our we um, we've abstracted away challenges and orders. I think, which is good in uh, in the set manager kind of internals. But that means that that kind of challenge controller kind of needs to behave independently, which is where that kind of get challenge call comes from. I think that's correct in saying that. Um, so where was I? Yeah, so you can either say that this kind of get challenge call is actually compliant and we shouldn't do anything. Um, yeah, and then potentially just have servers that we don't integrate with, which is obviously not a great state of the world. The second option is to remove that get challenge completely, which works. And I confirmed it works with that actually server. The and it passes into a test, so at least passes with Pebble, which was suggested. Also work with you know, Let's Encrypt Boulder and, and the rest of them. Um, the issue with removing that get challenge call completely is it could potentially make Cert Manager uh, more fragile, like I was saying before. Um, it could produce failure states where Cert Manager starts the Acme controller on an already um, uh, so the challenge is already being accepted, and then for whatever reason, Cert Manager it boots up that Acme uh, challenge controller boots up, and then where the Acme challenge controller thinks that it hasn't been accepted yet, so then it'll accept it for a second time, which will basically, well, in most cases, or I would assume that would mean for the Acme server, it would then invalidate that challenge, which would then 
fail the whole certificate, which means that it has to wait another hour. So it's just a, a quite a horrible failure state. It does recover, but it's um, a bit gross. And I then it's, mm -hmm. so, it's, it's quite rare. It it's mm -hmm. a difficult failure state to get to, I'd say, but it's never say never. Um, the third option is to instead of calling that get challenge endpoint, we call the get authorization endpoint, filter out the challenge that Acme Challenge controller is concerned with, and then kind of get the state from that call, I think is, is possible. So I think those are our three options as I see them. Would the get or sorry? Oh, oh, no. <laughs> All right, I'll quickly ask while I have the opportunity. Is the, the, the spec doesn't really say what first thing a second time should do. Is to there accept like... that is. Hmm? To accept, do you say? Um, when we call sync challenge status, does that, yeah, that's the thing that accepts the challenge again, right? So this is the thing. Our Acme client suggests get challenge has got nothing to do with accepting the challenge or anything like that. We just want mm. to get the current status of the challenge. The space doesn't really say anything about it. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should complain about the spec and get it, get it amended. What whatever whatever the uh, result of this is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know who's responsible for this RFC anymore. I know let's encrypt to the authors, but I don't know if they're, or you know, who's responsible for. It. There's a mailing list for um, the Acme spec. I'm subscribed to it. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and there's a list of errata. So I mean, whatever we decide to do, we should maybe email that list. Mm -hmm. So I would be assuming that it works and we can. I'd be in favor of changing that get challenge endpoint to get authorizations, because then it just means it works. Um, but what's uncomfortable is changing a block of code that's been there for four years. Um, and it's on the critical hot path. Does that mean we'd have an extra request as part of our hot path? No, no, we have the same number of requests. Does, is the get authorization like guaranteed to always contain the correct state of the challenges? Ooh. Or is that like a, not a... It should do, yeah. The thing is, it's um, like it's like probably, well, it's just uh, objectively worse, I guess, because instead of just getting the challenge, we're getting the order or the uh, authorization, which means we're kind of getting all the challenges. Um, but that, because we already had, does that, is, does that not again introduce the problem where we could ping Acme too many times? Because we already had this, there was this historical issue where we had like DDoS let's encrypt or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Like it would be bad to make more calls. If there are many challenges for certificate, we'll make. Uh, so it's only worse if get authorization is more, a more expensive call. So it's the same number of uh, network calls, but it would be worse if get authorization was um, more expensive than get challenge. Which it very well could be, but that's kind of an implementation detail of the Acme server. Um,
Yeah. Yeah, I'd have. I haven't actually had. I haven't read the spec that closely recently, but there is a table in. Well, it's on page twenty-one, which says the typical sequence of requests, and there is. There's nothing to do with getting authorizations. Basically, mm -hmm. we want to be. It's basically we we do it because we want to be stateless, right? Mm -hmm. Mm. Page twenty one, did you say? Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of the ugliness of trying to implement Kubernetes controllers for things that don't like Kubernetes yeah, controllers. The state on the other end. <laughs> yeah. I I think well, I think there's a, you could try you could try option three, but I think we should also email the mailing list and ask. Mm. And and we can do them both at the same time. That was that's what I would suggest. Mm -hmm. It <coughs> excuse me. It also suggests that we're not using an act be client the way it was designed to the fact that there aren't any kind of references to the things we're doing but yeah like you say maybe that's like a fault of the rfc rather than or a lack of text to the rfc rather than us. yeah i mean because there are only up until recently there are only two implementations that were widely used and they're both written by let's encrypt so mm -hmm. they're both going to be the same yeah. But if someone else comes along and reads the RFC and implements it differently, then uh, I, th I would blame the RFC, not us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let, let's blame the RFC then. <laughs> I, blame, I blame this RFC. Seems like the uh, cop out. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, to avoid the cough out, we could make a PR with Optin3 in and tell the people to test it. Tell yeah. the people who complain to test it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think, uh, yeah, let's let's do number three, test it. Um, and behave as though that's what we're going to PR and patch and ask them to test it and email the um, mailing list. I think that book seems like a sensible way forward. Did you check if others run into the same issues? I think that you're not the first people to implement um, at the ACNA challenge. Say, say that again, sir. So maybe you are not the first people who are running into the, this, this interpretation issue with RFC. So how do other, uh, others handle this? So why would I need to? And then the challenge. I think other people are implementing the RFC in just an app that has its own internal state, and it will do the whole thing at once, and then report back when it gets to the end whether it failed or not. Whereas Cert Manager, like all the state is on Kubernetes CRDs, so if we like this, the, this code is to recover from a crash or something. So when we start up, we have no state, and we need to get the state again which means that we collect it from the Acme server. But the act of doing that seems to have a side effect on dog tag PKI, where it uh, fails the challenge. Oh, nice. Thanks for the explanation. But there's, there's nothing really in the RFC that says that doing another get on the authorization is wrong. So it could be. It's just not done by anyone else. I think in that particular case, doing that get was triggering the, was effectively doing an accept, which in of itself is likely a problem on their side or wrong on their side. Yeah, but I think it's a hole in the spec rather than mm -hmm. our, pro our problem. But, I mean, it's a problem because we should be compliant. We should. Be compatible with as much as possible, but yeah, yeah, 
That's the whole point of a spec, right? <laughs> <laughs> is there a way of like so in the scenario where set manager has crashed it? What are we saying? It's um, it's 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 uh, connected to Let's Encrypt and told it uh, told it how it how we want the challenge to take place. How how we want Let's Encrypt to contact. How we want Let's Encrypt to talk back to us, DNS or HTTP, but we haven't stored the the fact we haven't stored the fact that we've taught we've made that request to Let's Encrypt in the state in the status dot state field. Is there, is there a way of sending an API request to Let's Encrypt to say abandon the transaction? I, I, this something's gone wrong. Cancel that previous attempt, and we'll start again. Like a way of cleaning up. We we can't uh, say we want to abandon if we don't know if there's something to abandon. I don't know. Is that so? The challenge you, you've 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 successfully told Let's Encrypt to start connecting to an endpoint on your server, and presumably it is doing that. But can't, isn't there sort of a, a parent transaction that you can cancel to tell it to stop doing that? Now you're going to have another go with a whole new sequence of um, API calls. No, I think you you can as from the client side you can keep polling the order and if and if Let's Encrypt fails fails to contact you a few times it will fail the order and then you just start again at new order. That's what I don't think you can tell Let's Encrypt to cancel. I believe. Okay, I, I just don't know much about it. I guess we yeah, I've also our... noticed that. Uh, sorry, go on. No, no, go on, Josh. I was going to say, um, I've also noticed that we have, when we call accept, we immediately call wait authorization, um, which means that, which I don't know if we should be doing that. Like, should we not return after accept and then on the next sync? Wait for authorization. Can you link um, like what you're looking? Which part? Sorry. Yeah. Sure. Obviously, it doesn't take very long, but this is where the edge case comes from. Is when. Um, Um, this line here, where we call accept and then we immediately wait for authorization without updating any of the state in cube. In what cases can it be nil? Uh, it's no i mean um it's uh it's problematic if we accept wait for authorization crash and then loop again then with the yeah, change so that one, yeah so yeah so if we if we didn't have that get challenge bit then it, it would try and accept again which might be fine for some implementations but also equally might not be Yeah. Are we running over? Six past so, yeah. ten past six. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna be the first to say I'm well, I'm gonna go. Yeah. Go to the pub, I think. I'll um yeah. I'm gonna be in the London office, I think, tomorrow. So anyone else isn't. Yeah, I mean we got a we got a decision unless anyone is opposed, so can end it. <laughs> Should we maybe like test it with like other because I, I know they're happening. Four issues also is like zero SSL because they do certain things differently and some other 
I guess if we change something, we need to test with other Acme servers. I don't know if it's. Ash added a bunch of flags for the end-to-end -end test, so you can just point it at other. You can just point it at other Acme servers, I believe. Hey, sir. Thanks. So good. Bye, everyone. Yeah. All have a good one. See ya. See ya. Probably stop the recording.